Hey guys, today I'm going to be painting the Master of Souls by Claustrophobia1643 by Monolith. Now this was actually voted on Patreon, so my patrons voted for what mini I should paint first now that I have Claustrophobia proper, and uh, they voted for this one, I believe, because they wanted to see me suffer and struggle. Um, what makes him kind of difficult, besides the fact that there's a lot of same colors here, is that he's sitting on this chair and so you have like his back and the chair are very close together which is kind of odd and then underneath him uh you'll see how i tackle that and also pay attention to what you're seeing here with his helmet color we'll, we'll get back to that later okay so starting right off the bat we're gonna have beige and this is gonna be for his whole chair as i'm calling it this is just kind of this rock outcropping we're not going to deal with the uh with uh the, the the base yet um th that's gonna be painted the same as i did the Haunter, uh, which I already have a video for, so feel free to uh, check that out. Uh, it'll be linked below uh, for your viewing pleasure. It's the exact same miniature from the game. I just got it a little bit early just to kind of show a little uh, preview. Uh, so if you were watching my channel at the time Claustrophobia was out, you kind of knew the, uh, the quality of these minis going into it. Now, as you can see in the back here, it is kind of hard. It's a little difficult to really get back there, but... Uh... Otherwise, it's not too bad. Now, you're going to see a lot of chains and whatnot here. Feel free to actually, as long as your paints are thinned down, paint over the chains. Uh, if nothing else, make sure you paint right to it. Because when you're painting the chain, you want to be very careful because it's a dark color. And if you left any gray, you're going to have to touch that up. And after you already shade it, like I'm doing now with this Reichland Flush shade, it's going to be very difficult to match it. Uh, you'll end up with tide marks. and it, it, Just make sure you don't leave any gray except on that chain if you're gonna leave any gray at all again right now i'm not being careful this actually went really quick because i wasn't careful so you just jam that in his back there it's fine well i mean, I mean it, you just you do what you gotta do right i mean there's not a whole lot of room back there um and that being said it's also not very noticeable uh, I think I do a pretty okay job the reason i did a reikland flesh shade by the way i don't know if you can tell or not but it has a little bit of a red hue to it so i thought it'd fit in with just the the rest of the theme here uh so here we have light orange again this is the exact same that i'm going to be painting all the bases now notice the texture on this base is not as well defined as the haunter um that's just how this mini is i'm not sure why it's very very thin and very hard to to get a wash to stay i was really kind of disappointed in that um the rest of the mini is fantastic but that base is just so shallow it's really hard to do anything with which is kind of unfortunate uh, I just have the beige out here, again, just doing a, a dry brush, a heavy dry brush, uh, popping out all those details so we have kind of the the uh, pooled recessed wash and then kind of the tinted and now just uh, the actual beige. I'm not highlighting above this, uh, I think this is fine, and it, it blends in enough with the base without being the same that uh, I'm I'm really happy with how it turns out. But we'll, we'll, we'll deal with that blending in a bit. Okay, so here's the flash wash. As you can tell, the wash is not sinking in like it did on the Haunter. Again, I'm not sure why. Uh, this one just has very, very fine detail. And uh, as a painter, it really kind of makes me a little, a little sad here, but I do what I can. So I'm going to do two different colors here. I have some lava orange, and then I'm also going to bring in some desert sand a little bit to kind of add a lighter color. If you look at a lot of the tile art, it has both these oranges, but then also these like almost tan highlights. And so I'm trying to kind of incorporate both, so that regardless of the tile he's on, he kind of fits in and matches. And it makes it a little splotchy too, which I kind of like. So I'm getting dark sand, and I kind of did a uh, like a two thirds on one, and then a one third of another. But you're gonna see, I'm gonna bring this out to the other side as well a little bit, like right now. And I'm I'm also getting it on the base uh, where that chair starts. Um, so I did a little bit of the orange, I'm doing a little bit of here. Again, just making it a little splotchy, a little haphazard, a little bit more natural, hopefully. Um, and, and I think that'll come out really well. Alright, next up we have Flesh Wash. Again, it just wasn't dark enough because it didn't recess, so I'm trying it again. It sort of kind of works. Um, it, it's as good as I can get. There's, I can't invent detail when it, when there's not a whole lot there. Um, but uh, we're going to get to the rest of the mini and it's fine. Notice again, I am blending it into the uh, the chair there. Okay, now for the skin I'm doing ivory and this is going to look bad base coated and that's fine. We're going to shift the color a lot. Anytime you have a bright color like this and you put a wash on it, 
it's going to really shift the color a lot. So I'm just getting this kind of, um, not quite white, right? But ivory is very close to white, uh, skin color because he's got this pale skin. Again, being very careful here, uh, because I do not want to touch the, uh, the chair at all, or I'll have to touch it up and that will be difficult. So just take your time and be careful. Um, hopefully you have a brush that doesn't split like mine. I don't know why it does that. And now we're doing the Seraphim Sepia wash on it, which as you can see, shifts it a lot. Gets it more in line with kind of the rest of the, the coloration that this miniature has, uh, which I'm, I'm really happy about. Notice I did paint the uh, face uh, in the ivory. Disregard that for now. I'm going to change it at the very end of the video, so stay tuned for that. And trust me, it's for the better. I think it looks awesome afterwards. So like right now, and I think it looks cool like this. Um, but it, it's actually a helmet and not his face. Uh, I, it, I didn't notice that at first on the art, but after a while I, I did, and so then I changed it. Now I have the ivory down again, but look at my paintbrush, or the bristles there. It is severely watered down, and notice how slightly I'm touching the mini. I'm just barely touching it to transfer a little bit. If you did this heavy, it would look horrendous, <laughs> right? Because that ivory is very, very bright, so just very little bit in your brush, you know, almost wipe it all off and then just barely touch the miniature and you'll transfer it on, it'll bring out that highlight, make it look a little bit more natural. And again, you can ignore the head. I'm gonna do the same thing, but with different colors at the very end. Alright, let's get some color on this. So this is orange fire to start things out, and it is very bright and a, a very fun color to do. I, I was kind of excited to be able to do this bright red. This art is stylized with shadow, so you only really see his knee and some of the back cloth fully colored, but uh, I'm, I'm doing the whole thing that way, obviously. Now here's me kind of dealing with the back. Uh, again, you can do it. There's enough space there. You can see if you come in at this angle, you can really get kind of in the back there. It's not too bad. And then you're going to bring that out. And this is actually all of the cloth is this color. Um, I noticed on the, I even looked afterwards because I didn't want to like, you know, taint my, my view here. But, uh, the way Monolith did their preview one, when they like went to the different cons, they had like this leather brown, which looks awesome by the way, but it doesn't match the art. I was trying to match the art. So the art just kind of has it all this kind of orange color. So that's what I'm doing. Reichland Flesh Shade is back out. And Reichland Flesh Shade is, again, that kind of, kind of a red-brown, which is fantastic for oranges. It doesn't show up that much on a red, but on an orange I think it does really really well to add that shadow effect. Um, that that red brown's just almost perfect. It's my favorite kind of uh, orange or shade for an orange, I should say. And uh, yeah, you should put this on pretty much everything. The detail in those wraps are fantastic. They have a little bit of dip in the middle, and so you can wash those. We'll highlight them later. It, just, it works really really well. Um, again, plop it on and then spread it around. That's fine. Uh, this whole back area is covered, so you don't have to you don't have to be super careful. Alright, so this is not white, instead of added white to that lava orange, uh, or the orange fire eye, uh, excuse me. And again, just like the ivory, very watered down, very light touch. As you can see, it does pop out that highlight a lot. It's what I want. Um, I did the same thing with the Haunter, where I kind of highlighted a bit of an exaggerated style, but not too much. It's not cartoony, um, but it, it, it does kind of give it a more dynamic look, and uh, a, a little bit... It makes it pop a little bit more on the table, and especially with this uh, this orange kind of being the only main color you see in the miniature, I really wanted it to kind of pop a bit more, so I think it works there. In the Haunter, it was that, that green 
uh, cloths he had. Same thing, that cloth really popped the rest of the miniature. So I did the same thing here. And if you ever think that highlighting doesn't add a lot or you've been skipping out on it, take a look at how this looks from before to highlighted. It's a huge difference and it's really, really nice. I, I'm very happy I started highlighting. It seems forever ago now, but I mean, uh, my first few videos that I did here uh, were not, I did no highlighting. So uh, I think I've come a long way, but it definitely adds a lot to a miniature really pops out the kind of the different folds and creases and uh, it can almost kind of give it a texture even which I really like and it's kind of just tracing it's not it's not actually hard at all the hardest part is getting how thin it needs to be and how light you need to touch it the lightness of your touch is the key more than even how wet it is now he's got all these like bracelets and he loves jewelry that's fine I'm not judging uh, he's got a lot of rough iron on him is what I'm choosing I really like this as kind of a dark metallic and it's because it highlights up really well we're gonna do that later I'm gonna point it out to you when we do and it's awesome the 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 amount you can highlight this as kind of a reflective thing almost makes it seem more metallic than it already does being a, a true metallic metal so uh, be careful though this is a very dark color the rest of the miniature is very bright and a mess up would be bad do not sneeze while you're painting this um, like don't if you need to sneeze throw your miniature away from you like, like if you feel it coming on just like just separate the brush and the miniature and then sneeze don't even cover your mouth just I mean don't cover the miniature either but like seriously that would be bad because it's gonna it would take you forever to clean this up so definitely don't make any mistakes um, I did make a few I was able to touch them up um, it, it just it, it sucks to do that right you know but you don't want to repaint it and if you don't have a wet palette you need to get them all again now look at the texture on that chain by the way that's awesome now the texture on his his body that chain a little small uh, the details a little kind of it's not it's not bad it's just not as defined right um, it, it, it's not like it, it doesn't deteriorate it, it, it all the links are there but you can tell the bigger and thicker ones show up a bit better obviously and are a bit easier to paint well sort of I don't know the the small ones you can almost just trace like a line and as you can see in this one I'm having to get the different angles so it takes a bit longer I suppose Alright, so this is kind of the highlight. I got Gunmetal out from Army Painter, and as you can see, it adds that shine. It just looks, mm, it looks great. I love it. Um, I, I really like when I can do something as simple as, let's add a little bit of silver to it. Kind of a, a medium dark silver. Uh, not super bright, but not the darkest I have either. Um, and, and it just gives that kind of, it's kind of like doing a non-metallic metal where you're choosing where the highlight is. Um, we're to the point where you could see I was almost tracing the light from my my camera uh, the kind of light mount that I have above it uh, right onto the bracelets where they were so again I really like that I'm also taking this gunmetal and painting these blades I was kind of ho-humming about what to paint these um, I thought about maybe I should bring out lead belcher from Citadel but I want to just keep this color out I already had it out I don't want to add too many more colors. This is already a fairly simple color-wise miniature to do. So instead, I just caught the gunmetal and threw some Nolan oil on it. I'm going to use that later anyway, so that's fine. Though actually, at this time, I was not planning on using Nolan oil again. Uh, it's going to be used for the helmet. Next up, we got Screaming Skull. So he's got like these spikes, these tusks, these teeth, these... I don't know. What I like about it is it's just different enough from the chair to kind of pop out, add a bit more detail. So you got those dark chains, the bright orange cloth, then you got kind of the the muted kind of chair on the base, his skin's kind of close, and then you also have these horns that just add a little bit a little bit of difference there. So I'm gonna cover them in some flesh wash. Normally I do an Agrax Earthshade, but I wanted them to be a bit brighter. In fact, I almost went with Drake Tooth by, uh, by uh, Army Painter, but I ended up with the Screaming Skull with a lighter wash. All right, now we're not actually. I mean, we're almost done, but uh, I'm not. I'm not. I'm gonna fix the helmet. So this is black gray. It's kind of the rim color choice I've chosen for claustrophobia. I don't like using black because it's very um, stark, and people will notice the base. And I want kind of the base to melt away. 
um, but but still separate the mini, and that's what I'm doing here. So again, it is a helmet. It's actually kind of a cool helmet. So I'm doing bronze. Now this is bronze by Vallejo. If you get the army painter bronze, it's a much different color. Um, I, I don't know why, but this is a Vallejo one. Uh, it looks amazing, and I have a really nice highlight I like to use. So before we highlight it, we gotta darken it up a little bit in the recesses, get that contrast going. So here's that no no again, and just run it through here. Um, thankfully, I did thin my paint, so I didn't really lose any detail from having to repaint this, which is quite nice. I'm I'm pretty happy with that. All right, so once that dries, make sure it dries. Get old gold out again by Vallejo. Now, typically, I don't like old gold because it's super glittery and I think it looks kind of silly but really thin down as a highlight here it looks awesome it does it goes great with the bronze and here is the final miniature there he is completed he didn't take that long I think I spent about three hours on him so nothing terrible for me I'm a slow painter that's really good and I think he looks super awesome I don't know if he looks imposing he is kind of sitting and it, he's like strapped to his chair by the by the looks of it but he seems to own the chair pretty well <laughs> Uh, also, so that's good. I'm pretty happy with that. Anyway, thanks guys for watching. I want to thank my patrons. You guys rock and are awesome. Thanks for making me paint this. I'm glad I did because I think it came out great. I'm really happy to paint a few more. So uh, let me know in the comments below what you want me to paint next for Claustrophobia. Um, I'm going to be getting Hate soon. I'm actually getting Forbidden Fortress by Flying Frog Games. Uh, by the time I post this, hopefully I already have it. So... Expect an unboxing of that soon. I have to build the minis before I paint those, so that might take a bit. But anyway, guys, enjoy the rest of your day. Thanks for spending some time watching me paint this, and uh, talk to you next time.